Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's January 25th. These are your headlines. As far as the fishing goes, there's really only one headline, and that is we've got safe ice across the region, and people have been out drilling holes and chasing flags all week to take advantage of this fleeting opportunity to get out in the hard water. Also, we've got some breaking striper news. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a few news items for you, and the first one is news that Rhode Island has conducted their winter stocking. They did that last week in spite of all that freezing cold weather. I imagine they must have needed a chainsaw to, uh, to stock those fish, but Rhode Island has been doing a, an above average, I mean just an amazing job with their stocking this year. Um, well, really, the fall into the winter. Putting a lot of big fish in. Since the last stocking, which I believe was in December, I have heard of, I think, five fish that were between four and a half and six and a half pounds. That's some impressive trout uh, by anyone's standards. So they've been doing a great job. Uh, they stocked 11 water bodies, I think. I'm going to put the list here on the screen for you guys. Um, it's been helping out with the trout, I mean, with the ice fishing. A lot of guys have gotten them through the ice in the northern part of the state this uh, this past week and um, you know when when this melts again which it inevitably will soon um, the open water fishing will resume so the trout fishing in Rhode Island should be great um, next thing is we'll check in with Jim Hutchinson we're gonna get some breaking striper news here he is the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission ASMFC meeting this week in Virginia and a big topic of conversation was Wednesday when striped bass was on the table. The ASMFC's Atlantic Striped Bass Management Board discussing the new addendum and all the stuff that we just followed over the last couple of months through the public hearings. There were a handful of folks in attendance at the Virginia hearing, approximately 200 people online for the webinar at some point, but the big discussion had to do with the low probability of rebuilding the spawning stock biomass of striped bass by the 2029 deadline, given the rate of mortality estimates especially from the 2022 season. The strong 2015 year class of striped bass, in terms of these fisheries managers, it's integral to reaching this rebuilding goal based on the last stock assessment in 2022. Now, the ASMFC Striped Bass Management Board kicked off their five hour hearing, yes, five hours, I sat through the whole thing, talking about what we talked about at the Fisherman Magazine last week, and that was the dismal Hudson River spawning numbers from 2023, the dismal Young of the Year class stripers. In terms of answers why the Hudson River spawning stock, this, the Young of the Year survey was were so bad in the fall, uh, well, one DEC official who spoke at the ASMFC meeting this week, he said temperature and flows were about right. They were in the range, though plankton levels they think might be a little off but they're gonna to continue to look at this research and data to figure out if they can find more answers as to why the Hudson Young of the Year recruitment or the Young of the Year surveys in 2023 were off. He did say, this DEC official said, round goby, an invasive species, is pushing its way farther down the Hudson estuary. Now the round goby uh, is a hitchhiker. It's a European arrival that was carried over to North America in untreated ballast in ocean-going ships from Europe. They have talked about that. We heard it at the ASMFC, and I know down in the Chesapeake, there's been discussion about channel or, or blue catfish also being a, a, an invasive species down there, which could have impact on these YOY uh, -Y results, young of the year results. Now, New Jersey's Joe Semino says the Delaware River survey numbers They've always been a little spiky is what he said, but he felt the various environmental conditions impacting the Chesapeake and the Hudson are probably similar to New Jersey's section of the Delaware River as well. Now, the need for rebuilding striped bass or the stock biomass of striped bass, it requires sacrifice on both sides, commercial and recreational. But it should be noted here, and we heard it frequently on Wednesday at the ASMFC hearing, quote unquote, over harvest in the recreational uh, community is the big culprit. And that of course comes from MRIP, MRIP the Marine Re Recreational Information Program, which is a sample survey of anglers by phone or mail, coupled with random surveys 
at docks, piers, and beaches. This whole striped bass debate is essentially all about MRIP. Now, enforcement personnel along the Atlantic coast had a meeting of all these options for recreational limits and commercial limits, and they offered their own opinion. Their consensus view on compliance was that regulations should be, quote, simple and accessible to all anglers. Possession, possession, leaving after a, a vessel, if you're coming back on a for hire boat, right? You go down the dock and into the parking lot. The enforcement officers don't know if you're on a for hire boat or if you're just coming in off your own boat. So they said that it really makes things difficult to have a split mode with different uh, uh, limits for recreational versus for hire. And it's very much like MRIP surveys, if you, if you think about it, where if the guy's surveying you in the, in the marina parking lot and he talks to you after you get off the dock, meanwhile, the dock side, the, the uh, vessel trip reports that the for hire captain may have coupled, you might have two differing sets of regulations, but of course I digress. The final options for the recreational fishery included option B, which was one fish from 28 to 31 inches, and option D being one fish from 30 to, 31, uh, 30 to 33 inches. That's for all anglers. The other two options, as I referenced before, mode splits, options C and D would have created different limits for private anglers than those, for on the, than those anglers on for higher trips. You can forget about that option A on the screen. That one was a non-starter because it offered no reduction. Here's the way it went down. A preliminary offer, uh, motion for option B was made, which was amended by a second option for option C, implementing that mode split, different regs for private anglers versus for hire. Ultimately, that option, however, failed nine to seven. So that reverted back to the original option of one striped bass from 28 to 31 inches, which is what we have now. That option passed, meaning nothing changes in the ocean striped bass fishery in 2024. It's as if none of the last five hours of my meeting time had actually happened. But this meshed pretty well with the public feedback and the comments received by the ASMFC, which overwhelmingly supported keeping the same measures in place for the entire recreational fishing community along the coastal states, whether you're a private angler or you're an angler on a for hire boat. For reference sake, states that voted in favor of separate striper regulations for private anglers and for higher anglers, what they call the mode split, included Rhode Island, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, and the Potomac River Commission. Voting against a mode split were New Hampshire, Maine, Virginia, DC, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, NOAA Fisheries, and the US Fish and Wildlife Service. So the final vote on one striper from 28 to 31 inches passed with two dissenting votes, New York and New Jersey. Now, in terms of the anglers on the Chesapeake, that was a separate vote, separate motion, separate set of options. Um, that's gonna be applicable to all fishermen. They had actually four motions applicable to all fishermen, and then two other options separating the for higher anglers from those who fish privately. Maryland's delegation pushed hard for this split mode uh, made multiple options to try to get the uh, ASMFC board to pass that mode split, it, they all failed. In the end, they're on the Chesapeake, which has various spawning uh, restrictions and mostly small, uh, smaller fish there than out on the ocean. Uh, it's one fish for all anglers, private or for hire, from 19 to 24 inches. So that's set in, in the Chesapeake. Um, again, no mode split anywhere you look. On the commercial side, a 7% reduction was also approved, which will require all states with a commercial striped bass fishery to modify their annual catch accordingly in 2024. There was a 14% cutback on the table, but because the existing management theory is that recreational uh, fishermen are responsible for all of the fisheries problems we're having in this country, thanks to NOAA Fisheries and their EMRIP program, uh, the board voted 13 to one to cut the commercial uh, uh, cutbacks in half. So rather than 14%, here's the kick in the crotch. The commercial sector only has to take a 7% reduction in commercial harvest. And that was almost delayed until 2025. Maryland, Virginia, and the Potomac River Commission tried their best to kick the commercial quota reduction down the road into next year. But some semblance of common sense prevailed. The motion ended with a 7-7 tie, which means it failed. Thus, commercial quota cuts will be in place by May 1st of this year, along with 
the new Chesapeake regs. Finally, as for the New Jersey striped bass bonus program, consider there's no uh, commercial harvest, no commercial sale of striped bass in New Jersey. It is a game fish. A portion of the unused commercial quota has been re reallocated to the recreational fishermen in New Jersey through a tag program. You have to request a tag, you get a tag. That tag then has to be monitored and checked back with the state. In 2023, only about 25% of the entire 215,000 pound quota was utilized and the rest set free. That's using the unused commercial quota for the striped bass bonus program. Now, basically, New Jersey asked the ASMFC management board to allow this program um, with a 7% cut to the 215,912 pound quota, of course, bringing it down to just over 200,000 pounds. They asked for this program to be continued without objections, and it was without objections. So New Jersey's striped bass bonus program continues in 2024. One final vote came at the five hour and 10 minute mark. Congratulations to Toby Lipinski, longtime editor and contributor to the Fisherman Magazine for being approved as a member of the striped bass advisory panel at the ASMFC. Five and a half hours, Toby, have fun. Now we're gonna check in over at the New York Boat Show with Jenny Ackerman. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. We are out of New Jersey and in New York City at the New York City Boat Show. We're gonna be checking out the hottest new boats, some new unveilings, and I just walked through. Listen, there's more boats here than there are plugs in the back of a Surfcaster's beach buggy. I'm so excited to show you all, now let's go. New from the Yamaha booth is the 350V6 Offshore four stroke series, definitely something you're gonna wanna check out. I mean, look at this thing. It's a tank. You can get to the Blackfish Grounds in no time. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the end of this video. We have a very special unveiling happening. So stick around, hang out, grab some popcorn as we go through the New York Boat Show. All right, so right now I am on the biggest Herbalo they've ever made, the flagship. Now this boat is a mix of luxury and fishing extremes. You could be crushing it in a fluke tournament on this vessel and then cracking open some cold ones with your buddy to celebrate your tournament win. This thing is absolutely stocked with luxury, comfort, and everything fishing, and it can go up to 60 miles per hour. Oh my goodness, if I saw this thing dr drifting on the axle, you know they're gonna crush some fluke. Words cannot describe the luxury of the new 2024 Pursuit OS405. It comes equipped with a sea keeper, so even your seasick buddies have a reason to come out and enjoy a day on the water. I mean, just check out this thing. It's an absolute beauty of a vessel out here by Pursuit, new to 2024, so you don't want to miss this boat. Check it out. Family boating outings are very important, and this is an excellent vessel by Sailfish. It's a 226. It is a dual console, so you can have your kids hanging out back here as you're running through the canal, and they can take a seat up at the front and enjoy the view. Next up, it's not only just a great clutch song, we're here at the Regulator booth talking about the 26XL. Now, Regulator is known to be the home for offshore light, but check these out. The 26 XO comes with jack plates, so you can get into that shallow water back bay fishing. You can have a nice offshore trip and hit up the back bays on your way back in. This boat can do it all. Offshore tuna to back bay fluke, check out the 26 XO regulator. Some captains say two holes are better than one. Two holes here on this World Cat, the newly debuted 26 footer. Now check this out, ladies. You're not, you got the, the head right here. Look at this, conveniently spaced, not in the way. And for people like me who are always stuck sitting on the cooler, you got your own little seat for the cooler. Isn't that convenient? So next up is the 2024 Grady White Freedom 335. Now I'm just in awe over all the features on this boat. I mean, first as soon as you come in, you got yourself a little kitchen with a grill so you can cook yourself up some nice pork roll egg and cheeses in the morning before you go black fishing. Pork roll, the Jersey thing, you know. And there's so many more features on here. You got a fridge, a freezer, you have all this space, a lovely cabin, to take a nap in, coming back from the offshore grounds. Just so much space 
a huge, basically full bathroom with a sink and everything. And you can come up here and enjoy a nice view on this awesome Grady White. Now we're on the biggest cobia being showcased here at the New York Boat Show. And check this out. I always love convenience on a nice fishing boat. You're not tripping over that bar on the tip top. It's built in, which provides more luxury if you have to use the head. They have built the bathroom deeper, farther back. It can fit someone who's over six foot in here with ease, so you're not worried about bumping your head or getting knocked around on the boat. Adding more luxury to the fishing game, we have this right up here. This centerpiece can raise up to be a table or even get raised up even higher. So those fly guys who like to stand at the bow of the boat can sight fish for those albies. And for those sunny days fishing out front, you got the sunshade to help support the fair weather fishermen and not get sunburned. So now I'm on the newest 28 fishermen from Steigercraft. As you know, Steigercraft sponsored our Dream Boat Challenge. And just look at this beautiful boat here. Literally, I'm lined up like I'm ready to go black fishing off this thing. This is a premier black fishing boat and for other species, of course, too. And if you love Steigercraft, you're going to want to subscribe to the magazine and get in on the 2024 Dream Boat Challenge. All right, now it's time to unveil the new Defiance in three, two, one. So right now I'm inside the Defiance, opening this marine gray tempered door, a new feature to the Defiance and the cabin houses six people in there. So you got a ton of space. You have in floor coolers and a full transom door. So talk about an unveiling. This boat is something special and definitely check it out at the New York Boat Show this weekend. A really cool feature that I'm gonna show you now beats up the hustle and bustle of trying to put the Minn Kotas away. Check this out. One click of a button. And the new Minn Kota Instinct does the work for you. At the New York Boat Show, remember to stop by the Fishman Magazine booth to subscribe or renew your subscription. You get some freebies. You get yourself a Tsunami iPop and a Surehold gift card and automatically entered into the 2024 Dream Boat Challenge. Something you don't want to pass up on, the Fisherman Magazine is your number one fishing authority. So make sure you subscribe or renew your subscription. Come see us at the booth. And the last thing of course is the giveaway, which wraps up this week we've got this prize pack here i'm going to add one more lure to the pile too i'm going to add one of the ipops that we're giving away at the shows right now and after a lot of careful consideration i have picked lawrence thompson's really cool trout pick um, as the wintertime winner i just i just love this shot i have a feeling this picture was taken in haste you know it's taken on the kayak and uh, it's one of those ones you know you take the shot and you look at it and you're like wow actually that came out awesome and um, I really, really like this photo a lot. In fact, I'm planning to use it somewhere uh, in the near future, so keep your eyes open for that. Uh, but Lawrence is going to win this stuff here, and um, we're going to start another one right away. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I'm going to build it, whatever it is. I'm in plug building mode right now, so I'm going to make a special plug, and uh, we'll give that away. We're going to wrap this one up on April 24th. So, man, it sounds good to say April 24th. Everything's going to be so much different then. But you guys know the drill by now. It's got to show you and your fish. It's got to be a recently caught photo. Uh, fish, recently caught photo. And it has to be emailed to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com or texted to the number on the screen. Just make sure you give me the pertinent details, like your name, where it was caught, how big the fish was. And um, tell me that you want to be in the contest. So put contest or giveaway in the subject line, and uh, we'll get you entered. And around the end of April, we'll pick a new winner. Now moving over into the reports, we'll start things off with our freshwater synopsis. And as I said in the intro, I mean, seriously, everything this week has been all about ice fishing. All the guys I know that are crazy about ice fishing, I think they just like stopped going to work. And all of them were out on the ice. We saw some big pike, we saw some nice yellow perch, we saw lots of nice trout, saw a surprising number of big largemouth bass. Um, and this stretch, from Maine all the way to the Connecticut border and, and beyond. I mean, the, the fishing has just been excellent. It's always that way though. When we get fresh ice, we get that first 
blanket or sheet is a better word of uh, of safe ice. It seemed like that fishing just explodes, and that's what it did. Um, so it didn't even really matter where you were. You you had ice that was safe. You know, up in Maine, I heard about like seven, eight, even nine inches, and that stretched over into New Hampshire and Vermont, Massachusetts. It's kind of a you know kind of a little bit of a wash. It started off six inches on the northern part. And then when you get down toward the Cape, you know, you're looking at three and a half to four inches of hard black ice, uh, although I'm sure that's not the case anymore. Um, you know, but, I mean, just about everything froze, even down here by the coast. I mean, this is saltwater ice behind me here. This is what's, what left, what's left of it. I certainly wouldn't try walking on that. But um, it's, I chose this spot just to illustrate how cold it has been. I mean, we froze this estuary solid. And... Um, you know, now we've got this warm up. We've got some rain. It's definitely going to, uh, it's definitely going to affect the ice. But um, I think some of these inland places are going to survive this because it looks like we're going to get cold again next week. But overall, the the, the synopsis is that the ice fishing has been really good. Uh, kind of like tog fishing, when you get out there right when it starts, it tends to be explosive, and that has been the case this week. Uh, I'll definitely be touching on that over and over and over again as we go through the states. But um, you know. If you have the time and the ice is and the ice survives this little warm up, you should definitely get out there because the bite's been great. Moving over to the regional reports, um, the first thing I heard about was some again just good ice fishing up in Maine. Got this video here, of my buddy Rob catching a pike through the ice up there, and um, you know when you come down along, really even along the coast up there, uh, the ice just seems to be safe everywhere you go. Uh, for a little bit more on things on the North Shore as we cross over to Massachusetts, let's check in now with James Jukes. As you can see, before work, getting out on the hard water, yes, we finally had some. And all the reports that I got, I didn't get out this weekend. I was busy with other things. But as far as all the reports from up this way, all through the valley and points north, everyone was on the ice. Everyone was kind of picking around, getting their fish. You know, lots of pan fish and bass, um, pickerel. Some of the places that have pike really wasn't quite frozen yet, so be careful out there. As you can see here, even where I'm at, there's uh, areas that are open. But I got a solid five inches right here where I'm standing. So um, everyone... With this warmer weather coming, be careful. Rain, ice, do not mix. We're gonna get tons of honeycomb. Uh, if you can, just travel a little north farther, that's all. Uh, but all good here. We had a good weekend. The weather cooperated, although it was freezing. Uh, we had no fronts moving through, and I think uh, that might have helped keep the bite a little steady. But from here on out, let's uh, pray that the temperature gods will give us some more ice to work with. Um, but yeah, everybody should be out here, if you can. And make sure you spud bar the water. Um, no need to go in and get cold or worse. But anyways, Dave, that's it from here. Hope everyone enjoyed themselves. And we had safe ice from Metro Boston out to Worcester and beyond. Uh, guys are on lakes and ponds all over the area. We're hearing about really good pan fishing, really good bass fishing. I mean, that, that seems to be, that was a standout for me is how good the largemouth bass fishing has been uh, over these last few weeks. I mean, over this last week. And then when you get down into Plymouth and the Cape where you expect, you know, usually you don't have ice. Well, they even had safe ice on the Cape. Guys were out doing really well with trout, uh, you know, on places like Peter's Pond and Hamblin Pond. And then I uh, heard about some really good bass fishing again in some of the ponds of Wareham. Guys are out on that. Um, that ice is definitely fleeting. I don't even think that it's probably safe today. Um, but we've got another cool down coming up, and it looks like we've got ice making weather uh, in the uh, in the forecast, at least for now, uh, going into next week. So you know maybe it'll harden back up out there. Um, but that's that's the. And that's the meat and potatoes of what I've been hearing. Just a lot of guys ice fishing. Nobody really saltwater fishing this week at all. And to wrap things up in Massachusetts, let's check in now with Roy Leva. Can you hear that, Dave? It's me, Roy Leva, from Western Mass. How's it going? 
Uh, so I got a report for you this week. Um, we finally got some ice. We got some ice. Uh, I've been fishing since Wednesday. Um, then it was probably, you know, anywhere two and a half to three inches uh, of, of really sketchy frozen snow. Uh, some of those places now have seven inches of that really crappy frozen snow. Um, and then there's some really sketchy black ice in some of the places that froze later. Um, I really wish that the temps were going to continue to be cold and we could make some ice. But as you can see, uh, we are in fog right now. It's above freezing. Um, two hours ago, all these trees were covered in snow from the snowstorm we got last night. And that is now bare. So um, uh, it's eating up this ice. As you can see, this is just, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's just slush on top of this stuff. This is no good. Uh, tomorrow's going to be in the 50s. Uh, with rain and then I think all next week uh, temps during the day are above freezing uh, and maybe a couple nights might you know get down a little bit for, for the most part uh, I don't think enough to make any more ice so if you head out if you're heading out to Western Mass um, you know be careful uh, uh, use you know logic uh, you know you really want four inches of, of good ice to be on um, and uh, other than that, uh, I'm sorry, I just keep looking over to watching my tip ups. Um, you know, if, if you really feel like you need to do some ice fishing, uh, my guess is probably some of the hill towns or the Berkshires are probably your best bet. But some of those bigger lakes on the Berkshires, uh, I'm, I'm guessing they're probably looking at the same thing as I'm looking here in Western Mass. All right, so if anything materializes and we keep some ice and I can go ice fishing next year, I mean next week, I'll have another report for you guys next week. If not, I'll catch you guys later when something shows up. Peace. Jumping over into Rhode Island now, let's start things off with an East Bay report by way of Florida from TJ Kopecky. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Uh, as you can see, uh, we got some greenery behind me. Uh, I'm down here in uh, southwest Florida, Clearwater to be exact. Uh, the fishing has actually been up and down here in Florida. Just cold fronts coming through. When I got here, it was 36 degrees in the morning. Uh, it, it warmed up into the 60s in the afternoon. Uh, it finally progressed to get warmer and warmer here, and the uh, the fishing actually started to get better and better. Uh, mainly been fishing in the freshwater here. There's a lot of ponds. As you can see, this pond behind me here. Uh, it's on the property where I'm staying, my father-in-law, and. Uh, there's lots of bass in it. There's lots of bait in it. There's uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, there's actually some snook and some uh, some sheep's head that are locked in here from Old Tampa Bay, which is behind us here, uh, have gotten in during the hurricane. So uh, I've yet to catch them, but uh, some of the neighbors here have talked about uh, the big snook that swims around in here, and you can see it occasionally come up and surface. But uh, most of the, the bass I've been catching have been maybe one to like three pounds uh, and I've basically been using like a storm shad here I don't know if you can see it this is a little three inch storm shad uh, it works really well in this pond and uh, also been using this uh, quarter ounce lead head with a, uh, a riptide mullet uh, and this uh, white flake here which works really good it's a three inch also uh, the smaller baits tend to work better uh, when the water's a little cold, it's just easier for them to process the food uh, when the water's cold. So uh, they're a little, not too lethargic. Uh, I did get a boil here when the water started warming up a little bit and uh, I was on bass, you know, every single cast. But uh, I'm going to be heading out to the salt water in a couple of days uh, just to see what I can do. I have a couple of inlets I'm going to fish uh, with some live shrimp. I have a bunch of gulp that I'm going to use. Uh, you all know I'm a fan of gulp and uh, it works well down here uh, for snapper and uh, pretty much everything else. So uh, that's what it's like here in Florida. I know it's cold back at home, but uh, eventually it's going to warm up, guys. Uh, so uh, we'll catch you next week. Tight lines. Now, one little bit of saltwater news that I got out of Rhode Island this week is that the party boats have been running again. Um, for a few weeks there, it seemed like no one was going out. Not that surprising, a terrible storms and then frigid cold. Uh, but the cod fishing has picked back up. Guys are getting some fish out there, so that's something you can do, especially if you get a nice flat day. You can get out there, do a little saltwater fishing. Uh, on the flip side, though, going inland now, uh, we talked about it in the uh, <clears throat> excuse me in the news part, but um, 
you know, they just did a bunch of stockings again in Rhode Island. We got salmon and we've got trout, and they put a lot of big trout in. So guys are out taking advantage of that. I saw uh, four and a half, or actually it was almost, it was just under five, four fourteen, and then a six point two. Uh, take it through the ice. I get these pictures from our buddy Dan Southwick, and um, you know he said the ice fishing up in the northern part of Rhode Island was exceptional this week. They they had some big trout. They were jigging a lot of the trout. Uh, they had some nice largemouth up to 5.1 pounds, and uh, they were getting some perch and panfish as well. So the bite has just been amazing uh, throughout the really throughout the entire area. You get down closer to the coast, the ice gets a little iffy. I was out yesterday checking some of the ponds along the coast, and I wouldn't walk on them. Um, you know. Maybe a seasoned ice fisherman would give it a shot, but not I. Uh, so definitely want to be careful, especially as you get closer to the coast. But ice fishing in Rhode Island has been really, really good. And um, I'm expecting these coastal ponds to open up by the weekend, so you may be able to do some more open water fishing. Uh, for a little more on some wintertime tactics for open water fishing, let's toss it over now to Jeff Sullivan. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys, it's Jeff back with another Lure of the Week and an update on the fishing report. Um, so actually I have an update on the Crafty One custom store hours. Um, Crafty One, I have it wrote down here so I don't mess it up and Ralph doesn't kill me. Um, so the, the update with Crafty One is they're going to be opening Friday, February 2nd. Um, Thursdays, um, Thursdays, Fridays are going to be nine to five and Saturdays are going to be nine to three, closed Sunday and, um, uh, Monday. So they're ready to open for the 2024 fishing season. Um, it was a good off season for them. And uh, they're ready to get back to it. Um, as for Lucky Bait and Tackle, um, still the same old. We're still closed till March 1st. Um, if you have any questions, just give Manny's phone a call. Let it ring. goes right to his phone. If you have any reels to bring in, bring them in. Um, all right, let's get into what I like to use um, this time of year. And I'm talking cold water. Um, since our months have changed, the weather's changed a little bit. You know, I like to kind of pick up the Ned rig around mid-November to end 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 of winter. Um, maybe maybe April, depending on how warm the spring's been. Um, but this is uh, these baits. I like to I really really like to carry with me throughout the season, um, winter season. Sorry, as for uh, as for finesse applications. Um, so these these are these what I'm talking about the Ned rig and uh, the Ned rig is man that's a staple in bass fishing it's been a staple in bass fishing for a few years now um, I mean they just get the job done when other other saw plastics can't um, the only difference between these Ned rigs and the other Ned rigs is on the market I should say is this a Laztec. Um I mean this this right here it's buoyant. It's the, the last text buoyant. It makes your bait stand up in the water and it floats. Um, so that way it looks like a um, a crawfish or a fleeing bait fish, or you know a crawfish is stance is going to be claws out up from the bottom. You know if you're smallmouth fishing or you got a place where largemouth like to grub on craws. But yeah, that's if you ever seen a crawfish um, in the in the battle position, I should say, they're usually they're usually stand straight up and their claws are straight out, um, ready to ready to fight. So that's why I like to use these. They really hang in. They really hang in there, and the soft movement of the bait in the cold water just has us move around just a little bit, just to get that initial strike for those fish to go boom and eat it. Um, you know, I mean, they have all they have all sizes. You know, you can either go with the big baits. Um, what I like to use is the natural presentations, uh, this one's called, uh, the TRD, um, Drew's Craw, uh, by Z-Man. Z-Man is awesome at making Ned, uh, Ned presentations. Um, I mean, you can also use tubes, any, anything you want. You can put them on regular ball head jigs and swim them like swim baits. You can bump them off bottom and slow roll them. You can even sweep the rod tip. You know, you don't. There's really no wrong reason to fish a Ned Rig, um, but I do like fishing them on hard bottom. Um, you need hard bottom and some structure around, you know, to uh, to fish these baits. Um, you want it banging off bottom. You want those fish to hear it bang bottom and, and like, you know, it annoys them. So, um, and it also attracts them in dirty water. They want to know where that noise is coming from. They're curious. Um, you know, even stuff as little as a finesse 
micro net head. Um, you know, stuff like that. They'll find this and they will absolutely gulp it down, no issues. Um, so, you know, whether it's two a three inch bait or it's a one inch bait, um, whether it be, you know, your craw presentations or your tube presentations. In the winter time in cold water, I love Ned, Red, uh, Ned heads, excuse me. Um, you know, they, they work when other things can't get the job done. Um, you can throw it in the coldest of water. Uh, up until almost you're thrown on ice. That's that's how good it is. Um, I like to use it on, you know, I don't change much in the wintertime because it's my trusted, tried and true presentations. Um, I throw it on a seven foot St. Croix ultralight, believe it or not. I like to fling it. I like to snap my rod tip and get that thing going up and then have it sit down. It's um, It gets them looking again because sometimes they'll lose it. If it's a soft bottom, they will lose it. Um, it'll just go punch right through the grass. You'll never, you'll never catch any fish. So that's why I was saying you want it on a hard bottom. That way those fish can see that hit bottom and it stays there. Sometimes you can just dead stick it and get smacked. Um, it's incredible. Really is. Um, so yeah, a St. Croix seven foot ultralight with a 1000. I love my 1000 size reels this time of year. 1000 size pen fierce three, um, with 10 pound braid, 10 pound fluorocarbon, I have a trusted system. I don't really move off of it too much. Um, you know, whether it's trout, perch, bass fishing, even pike fishing, you know, in the, in the kayak or the canoe, I like to, uh, I like to use that. It's super fun, super sporty. And, uh, yeah. So that's my weekly, um, weekly lure. It's the Ned head and, uh, these things just get it done, man. So if you haven't tried Ned rig, I would suggest you try it, pick it up, um, uh, Play around with some of the patterns and jig heads and stuff like that you got you like. Um, go out there and like I said, there's no wrong way to fish a net. So they get the job done throughout the whole season. Um, if you really want to use them throughout the whole season, I've even caught sea bass on net heads. Um, and I'll tell you, it's a fun it's a fun thing to do because uh, there is there is saltwater um, Elastec Z Man baits out there. You you feel free to go through those, look through them and see what fits you and fits your presentations. Um, but all right, see you guys next week. Thanks. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. So let's move over now into Connecticut. Surprise, surprise, Connecticut has safe ice too. And that has been drawing most of the angler interest uh, from the guys that I've talked to. Uh, there's been guys on every one of those lakes that uh, got the sea for islands. I did not hear of anybody catching one through the ice. I bet somebody did. Um, but there's just no news and no pictures to, uh, to corroborate that. However, the coves of the Connecticut River hardened up and um, the fishing was very good. We saw everything from some really nice pike to some big largemouth bass. Even a few striped bass came through the ice and uh, the pan fishing was exceptional. Uh, talking to my buddy Mikey D'Alfonso who does a little bit of writing for us and um, also will take great care of you at the Shipwright's Daughter in Mystic if you're ever over there. Um, but anyway, he sent me this picture of just a massive pile of crappie that he caught on one of the coves and uh, was getting ready to uh, have a little fish fry. So suffice it to say, the ice fishing in Connecticut has been awesome too and the coves of the Connecticut River are typically the focus and uh, they've been the focus once again this week. Uh, let's check in now for a little bit more on all that ice fishing with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, uh, so it looks like we're settling back into the mild winter after that Nice little cold spell uh, that gave me the opportunity to get out on the ice a few times. Some of the Connecticut River coves did freeze pretty well. Um, I managed to get out and actually get a striped bass through the ice, which is always a kick. Uh, and a couple more times on some ponds and lakes, uh, the Connecticut stocks with their uh, big bird stock Seaforel and brown trout, uh, which are a really cool fish. I didn't manage to get any. Um, I did get some yellow perch and, and smaller trout and things like that. So not the ice season that we're hoping for but at least we got some uh, i'll always enjoy that ice time now we're settling back into the mild conditions that's going to be good for the small stream trout fishing and some of the tmas if there was any shelf ice it's about to all break up uh with the little bit of rain we're getting the flows are going to be on the moderate to high side uh, but it doesn't look like we're going to get enough to really blow things out at least that's the hope We'll see if that changes, uh, but at the very least, a lot of the smaller streams will be good and fishable um, during these mild conditions. So, at least there's that. Uh, it really got me hoping for spring, though. So, 
hold in there. Uh, enjoy, enjoy what little winter fishing we get. And uh, hopefully we get one little blast of cold to give us a second uh, shot at some ice again this winter. Uh, easily could happen. Next up, let's toss it over to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. First announcement for this week, on Saturday at 10 a.m. at Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook, Connecticut, I'll be doing a seminar talking about uh, fishing Long Island Sound and beyond. I'll be discussing tactics, electronics, and gear. So if you want to attend, you just RSVP on their website. It's free to attend. Hope to see you there. Um, personally, I haven't been doing any fishing. I was walking by the Connecticut River a couple days ago, and it was Iced up pretty good. Probably the most amount of ice I've seen in the past several years. I've been more focused on getting gear ready. So I've been ordering my new equipment, uh, spooling my reels. So this is a good time of year to do that. I'm sure there's plenty of people that are fishing freshwater and probably up north. Uh, I'm sure there's some people that are ice fishing if it's safe. So that's all I have for you this week. Good luck. And we'll head a little west of the river. Check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Good morning everyone, Matt here at Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. Uh, still midwinter stuff going on right now. We've had a lot of ice recently. Um, I do think that that's going to either become unsafe to fish or kind of thaw out um, in bits and pieces in coming days. Um, it is supposed to warm up pretty good here for a few days, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, a little bit more rain in the recent forecast, but I do think that a lot of the creeks and rivers are fishable as of now. Um, definitely check water levels if you've got websites um, and the ability to do that. Uh, have not heard much about the holdover bite, though I have seen some folks um, getting a few fish on social media, so they're definitely around. Um, myself have not targeted them in a little bit here, but you know they're typically there. It's just a matter of finding them and then um, the always challenging getting them to bite. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, if you do head out there, stay safe on any of that ice. Always double, triple check it um, and enjoy the water. And the only open water fishing that we're really hearing about in Connecticut has been the rivers. You know, we're hearing about some decent trout fishing uh, from like the Farmington and the, uh, and the Salmon River. We've got a big rain coming in tonight and into the weekend, which is probably going to mess that up. Um, but if you make it happen quickly, you could probably cash in on that. Also saw some Atlantic salmon coming out of the Naugatuck River. So, you know, still some, still some river opportunities. We're just going to have to watch this rain. And then I have been hearing that, you know, the hardcore guys have been getting some fish in the Housatonic still. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fisher report. This past week we had some ice with the cold temps. We saw some pike, trout, walleye, panfish all come through the ice. So that was cool. Hopefully we get some more hard snaps throughout this winter to get more anglers out on the ice and catching some fish. We got some warmer temps coming up with some rain. Typically on the Housatonic when we get rain in the winter and the water's muddy, the stripers chew really well. You know, everybody throws their favorite soft plastic this time of year like GT Eels, Lunker City, Alby Snacks are always really popular. We're stocked up on all that stuff. And for the herring bite, it's still been spotty. It hasn't been fantastic yet. Last year, the fish really showed heavy up in uh, February, so we're hoping for the same this year. But if you do want to get out and try to get the ones that are around, you know, the Maritime Center behind uh, the Norco Aquarium is really popular. Calf Pasture Peach off the fishing pier is good. And then to our west, I heard some herring too, so Stanford and the Greenwich area. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there, you know, I mean... Now we have to kind of pray. If you like fishing on the ice, you gotta pray that these next few days of rain and all this stuff doesn't destroy the ice. It's definitely going to have an effect, but with this cool down coming next week, we may, we may weather the storm, especially inland. So we're gonna keep an eye on that and uh, we'll talk more about that next week. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full taste of what we offer there. We cover all the fishing from Delaware to Maine. We have travel pieces that reach outside the region. We cover all the newest tackle. We cover all the newest boats. And we cover every angling discipline you can think of, from surf and fly to inshore to offshore to paddleboard to micro fishing, carp fishing. It's all covered. Uh, it's 30 bucks for the year. You're going to get 12 issues sent to your house. You're going to get 26 digital editions sent to your email during the season from April to mid-November. And on top of that, you're going to get access to all the back issues online, and you're going to get digital access to both of our other editions, the Long Island and the New Jersey-Delaware editions, so you can keep track of all the fishing that's going on along the East Coast. 
If you go and you check that out and you're still not interested, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing right there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching and we'll see you next week.